Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers. I'm looking at a book which is fascinating. It's called The Snail and the Ginger Beer. This is the book here, just under 200 pages, by Matthew Chapman. It's about the singular case of Donoghue and Stevenson, the creation of the modern law of negligence. This is the book itself. It's standard. There are a couple of pictures in it, which is rather good. But the general thrust of the book is about the case itself. Now, my wife and I have written a review, and this is what I've said. <clears throat> yes, no snail, but aren't you glad it's not your neighbour you drink with? But the issue, of course, was about a snail, a decomposed snail, in a ginger beer bottle. Of course, we'll look at the facts in a little bit more detail. Our view is that this is a most welcome piece of legal history for all students, lawyers and laymen interested in how we've arrived at the modern law of negligence. It's a must, in our view, for all who have ever wondered what really happened to the snail and the jurisprudence of the judiciary at the time, because it looks at the people who made the decision. Many will recall that on an August evening in 1928, May Donoghue, a shop assistant, entered a cafe in Paisley in Scotland. The circumstances of her visit made famous legal history. A ginger beer was ordered for Mrs. Donoghue by an unknown person, who famously then complained that, to her surprise and shock, a decomposed snail had tumbled from the bottle into her glass. Mrs. Donoghue sued for the nervous shock she claimed to have suffered as a result. The question, of course, was whether she had a case in law against the manufacturer of the ginger beer, and it was argued as far as the House of Lords, the manufacturer being Stevenson's, who were a well-known bottling firm. It's hard to overstate the importance of Donoghue and Stevenson, even today in the 21st century, because it represents perhaps the greatest contribution made by English and Scottish lawyers to the development of the common law as we know it even though it was a split decision by, in my view, a very inexperienced House of Lords composition as an appellate authority. The case makes a legal point clear that even without a contract between the parties, a duty of care is owed by A to take reasonable care to avoid acts or omissions <coughs> which could reasonably be foreseen as likely to cause injury to his neighbour B. <coughs> This concept, developed by that great and splendid jurist, Lord Aitken, has become known as the universal uh, shorthand, the neighbour principle. Who, Lord Aitken uh, asked rhetorically, is in, my, in law my neighbour? Donoghue and Stevenson provides the answer. Now, Matthew Chapman, who's written a done a lot of research and written an excellent book here, which is very readable, tells the full story of this remarkable case brilliantly with all the little bits we missed during our studies, of course, because we were very busy and we didn't have time to know about, um, obviously, as students, like, for instance, there wasn't really a snail. But that doesn't matter because it was the concept. The book provides a vivid bibliographical sketch of the protagonists and of the great lawyers who were involved in the case at the time. The book sets Donoghue and Stevenson, of course, in its uh, historic context and reevaluates the evidence for the 21st century, of course, we don't know who May was meeting, and it could have been a man. And of course, in those days, it would have been a bit difficult. Of course, the roots, though, of the intellectual argument are of the neighbour principle, and they're excavated in the parable, of course, of the Good Samaritan <clears throat> and the case law of the United States in particular. The constitutional importance of the case is also dealt with in a masterly way, we feel. The blow it struck for a moral approach to the law, which departed from a rigid doctrine of precedent which the common law had always been criticised for. <laughs> Chapman investigates the influence of Donoghue and Stevenson across the common law world, from the USA to countries of what is now the Commonwealth, and it's a very useful book for such a wide range of people across the globe. That snail has a lot to answer for, but at least we have a definitive work of what now happened. And we never really believed there was a snail in the first place. But what a good story. Thank you, Matthew, and thank you, Wildis. All the very best to you. Bye-bye.